Hey guys, it's Brooke and welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to be doing a labor and delivery story time. So I went to the doctor's now with like almost 38 weeks and they told me I was going to be getting induced on March 19th. So we got there, it was me, my mom, and my boyfriend. And when we got there, we were just going to our room, getting everything ready. I had to change my clothes, obviously, into like this gown thing. And we were just getting all situated. So when we were there, they were telling me that I can eat anything because they were expecting me to deliver a Laura soon. So we were literally in there from five to eight. And at eight o'clock is when they started giving me these pills. They were talking to me, telling me that they're going to give me these pills and you could take them in your mouth. So I took them in my mouth and what they do is they soften your cervix. So that it opens and you can get dilated. So I took a bunch of these pills and then every two hours they're supposed to them. So from 8 to like 3.30 in the morning I was taking them. And then they came in and they took a folly bloom. Which is this, um, it's like this thing that has a bowl and it's like these tubes and they basically put it in you. And there's like a catheter attached so that you can dilate faster. It like, um, they put it in you and they pump it up with this saline so that it gets big and then it will like keep on dropping and dropping so that your cervix will open so they put that in at like 3 30 in the morning or so and i wasn't even feeling contractions with those little tiny pills the screen was saying i was having very small contractions when they inserted the balloon i was having more contractions but they weren't painful like i could deal with them so it's probably like five in the morning at this time so from 3 30 to 5 i was just sitting there like okay like i'm having little contractions like whatever and then i stand towards the bathroom and my water breaks <laughs> I thought that I peed myself, but I didn't, my water broke, and as soon as my water broke, a nurse, she just came in, and it was like, she was like already there, so she just helped me, she helped me clean everything, I went to the bathroom, and the balloon that they put in me, it was supposed to drop when you're at a 3 or 4, or when your water breaks, and the balloon did not come out of me, so I was like, okay, like whatever, and there was telling me to tug on it, so I made me pull it out, and it was not coming out. So like I was saying, I was in the bathroom, they told me to pull out the balloon, it wasn't coming out, and I was bleeding, and I didn't know if that was normal or not, but they were telling me it was normal, and I thought maybe something wrong with me but um at that point my the fly balloon should have fell out and that means that i would have been giving birth very very soon so once my water broke i was having horrible contractions like they started off like like i said like they were like really nothing i then i could feel them and then they were just really really bad and i forgot to mention when they inserted the balloon into me i was I was at a one, like I was barely dilated, I was at a one. And then when my water broke, I was at a three. So then from like 5.30ish to nine o'clock, nobody came in the room, nobody checked me, like nurses weren't really in the room, but they were noticing that the balloon should have fell out because my contractions were getting more and more painful. And so then one of the nurses just decided to pull the balloon out, which hurt really, really bad, let me just say. And once she pulled that balloon out, my contractions were horrible literally so bad and i had all back they were i did not have any front like cramping like people say they feel like period cramps well i never even got period cramps so i honestly don't even know what those feel like but i had all back labor it was like this warm sensation that just wraps around you and it's just like all on your back then someone came in the room at like nine o'clock to check me and see how dilated it was i was at a four or five they said and they said they don't like giving you an epidural till you're at a six or a seven so I was getting very frustrated because I was like, I need the epidural. I was in so much pain. I was in so much pain. And since my water broke, I was leaking so many fluids and I was bleeding and everything. So it was just like so messy and I was just in so much pain. Well, like I said, I was at nine o'clock. So then at 9.30, I was telling my mom and Jason, my boyfriend, that I'm telling them I need the epidural. I was like, I need the epidural. I need that right now. We called the nurse and the nurse, she said that she would go tell the anesthesiologist. I think that's what it's called. I'm not sure. But, um, so she went and told her and then she came in and she started prepping me for the epidural and I was so scared the epidural was going to hurt and it did not hurt. I was freaked out. I mean, the needle is literally huge and I thought it was going to hurt so bad because everyone told me that it hurts really bad. It didn't hurt at all. So my epidural probably didn't even like get in me like all that until it was maybe 10 o'clock. And then I started shaking extremely bad and I was freezing. And I thought there was literally something wrong with me. I was talking to the nurse and I was like, why am I shaking so much? Why am I so cold? She had to bring me blankets. I had like three blankets on me because I was freezing. And she said to me, don't control the shaking because if you do, then you'll have a horrible recovery. And I was like, okay. So I didn't control my shaking. I'm just sitting there like shaking like crazy person. <laughs> then the person who actually did this baby, I'm not sure the actual term is, but she came in and she said that she was going to check me. So she texted me and I was at an eight. And then all of a sudden, in like the matter of one second, I went from an 8 to a 10. And then my daughter's head was literally like coming out of me. So she tells me to push and I was like, no. I literally told her I'm not pushing because I did not prepare myself. I was terrified. I was like, you just told me I was 8 and now I'm all of a sudden I'm at 10. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I always was told that 
you'll feel all this pressure. You'd like, you'll know like you're ready to push, you're ready to push. I was like, I'm not ready to push. Like I am not ready to push at all. So probably within like five minutes after her telling me to push and I told her no, she got ready for I to deliver my child and then more nurses were coming in and she told me to push and I pushed, I pushed one time, probably for not even a minute and then Allure was born and she was born at 11.56 and I would probably say that I had an easy labor just because I was only in active labor from like 5, 5.30 to 11 56 when she was born so it's like six seven hours that was an actual labor but don't get me wrong it is so painful i also had a really easy delivery like i just said i literally pushed one time and she was out i pushed for literally not even a minute probably and she was out so it's like that was good i mean i did tear i had i think they said a second degree tear which is the most common tear but i'm pretty sure i only pushed one time for literally a minute because how small allura is I was expecting her to be like six, seven pounds because see, I was a seven pound baby. Um, you could like, my bump was not big at all. When I literally was going to give birth, it was not big at all. People literally, they saw me, they'd be like, oh, how many weeks are you? And I'm like, I'm 38 weeks because I gave birth at 38 weeks and five days. So I'm like, oh, you look like you're only like 30. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but like, keep in mind, I'm not a big person and you shouldn't expect me to have a huge baby. She was only four pounds, 15 ounces. I mean, she was almost five pounds, but. So after I gave birth, I literally had my epidural for like almost two hours and I was trying to get into the postpartum room, but I could not even get into that room until I was not numb. So we were waiting in the labor and delivery room for probably two more hours after I gave birth, just so I could not be numb anymore. So I could go to the bathroom, all of that before I can even go to the postpartum recovery room. The postpartum room where I was was actually really nice. And like I said, my mom and my boyfriend were there. So my boyfriend's up on this couch and my mom's up in this like chair recliner couch thing. And people tell you that postpartum recovery, like the day you have your baby is hard. And it is because I was literally in so much pain my epidural wear off just because like I just had a baby. I mean, they're coming in, they're pushing on your stomach, like making more blood come out, making sure your uterus is going back to normal. And it's like, that part is not really painful for me, but you also are getting these cramps after you give birth, especially if you breastfeed because your uterus is trying to contract back to how it was. So you're basically having contractions that you were when you were in actual labor. But there's always people coming in and out, checking on you, making sure that you're okay. If you don't bring your baby to the nursery and nobody's really like awake to help you, then you're basically just sitting there taking care of your baby the whole time. I mean, I did not sleep for literally 40 hours straight. From the moment that I got to the hospital from to the day after I delivered, I did not sleep at all. And it's like, I thought I was going to hallucinate or something. But like I said, I had really easy, safe, and fast labor and delivery. And I'm really grateful for that because I could not even imagine being in labor for 24 hours or longer. Delivering your child for like three hours sounds insane to me. I could never imagine doing that. Everyone has totally different experiences. And especially with their first baby, they tell you all these things. You can be in labor forever. You can literally be pushing for up to three hours. And it's like, that sounds really terrifying. Everyone's body is different. So it really just depends on you and how your body is. So that was my labor and delivery story time and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to start making and posting videos every week. I want to post at least twice a week and please leave video suggestions in the comments because I literally have no idea what I should make. Okay, thank you guys for watching.